Good morning. Welcome to Axe and Root Homestead. <laughs> I'm Angela. If you're new here and I have a six acre permaculture farm in central New Jersey. Uh, today I'm going to be sharing some information about our geese, how they contribute to the farm, um, what they contribute to a permaculture system, what you can expect geese to do for you and what they can't do, and a little bit of information in between. Okay, so let's start with a few just fundamentals of keeping geese. Um, you need to have more than one. Geese by nature are paired animals, okay? They like to have a mate. And while a male or a gander will definitely have a harem of ladies, they really do um, thrive when they're paired up. Speaking from experience, I had one male goose that did not have a mate and he ended up really brutally hurting a duck that he had tried to pair up with. So definitely always have two or more. Um, I was always taught when I first had geese that I shouldn't have more than two or they wouldn't see my ducks as their flock. And the reason I want them to see the ducks as their flock is for guardianship reasons and we'll get to that in a minute. I found that to be untrue. Um, I now have a flock of eight geese and their presence alone is enough to deter a lot of small predators and they absolutely still sound their calls at abnormalities and larger predators. Um, but you can see they're in the, in the stream with the flock of ducks and they absolutely still all move as one unit. Sometimes they'll go off and forage in the pasture on their own, but I think um, you can definitely have more than two. For the most part, geese are gonna be herbivores. They really thrive on weeds and grass, which is probably why you've heard the term weeder geese. What they really like to do is go around and chew um, really deciduous vegetation off of fence posts, and they like to graze in the pastures as part of our pasture rotation system. Um, they also have been known to eat the occasional insect, snake, I've seen them eat minnows, so I would call them omnivores, but they really do prefer uh, vegetation. Despite my flock being in the water there, geese included, uh, they are primarily land animals. So you actually don't need to have a waterway with the exception of the Sebastopol breed. My friend Mandy Wild Oak Farms is participating in this goose week and she's gonna share some more information about the breed uh, specifics. But if they want to be able to preen like the Sebastopols do and groom themselves, water is definitely greatly appreciated. If you don't have a pond, a lake, a stream, or some other natural waterway, you can fill up um, a kiddie pool and they're perfectly happy in there. The biggest thing when it comes to water with geese is drinking. Like any other animal, they need to have access to fresh water, clean water, unfrozen water throughout the year. And they need to have a water bucket that's deep enough for them to dip their entire head and beak in. This allows them to flush their eyes, but also to blow out their nares, their little nostril holes that are on their beaks. Because if that's clogged, they can't breathe as well. So you wanna make sure that they can flush out their noses or beaks as needed. Okay, so the last fundamental that we'll talk about is just housing. So a couple of notes on housing. Just like any other poultry animal, you're gonna to wanna to be able to keep it safe from predators. Here at our farm, we have livestock guardian dogs. So I no longer use a coop. Um, they are outside in this pasture. There they are with their sheep friends. Um, and they come and go in and out of the pasture all day, every day. This here is one of our three-sided shelters that we use. It's incredibly deep. Um, large enough to accommodate six to eight sheep. And so when the flock is in this particular lower pasture here, they can go in, get way back in, in there, be protected from rain and other elements if needed. If predators are an issue for you, make sure that you have a perfectly safe locking coop that you can put them in at night. Geese are very hardy animals, the least hardy breed being the Sebastopols. They have those curly feathers that are beautiful, but they don't insulate them very well. So for my girls, whether they're in a coop or not, they always get very deep straw to bed in and uh, they stay nice and warm and toasty. Right? Regardless of where you keep your birds, it's worth noting that no matter how docile their breed is come breeding season, they can be a little bit more aggressive. And so you're gonna to wanna to give them their own space. Smaller birds that they may be housed with, including guineas, chicken, ducks, turkeys, etc. cetera, um, they can suffer the wrath of a hormonal goose who's just trying to protect her nest. So really do everybody a favor, keep everybody safe and happy. And if they're showing signs of aggression, just remove them and give them their own space. And they should all be back to one happy flock in about six to eight weeks after breeding season is over. Okay, so the traditional farm would probably keep geese for meat, eggs, and breeding. Um, here on our farm, we sell the eggs or donate them to the food pantry and we don't eat meat. 
I actually keep them as a part of my permaculture ecosystem and let me tell you what that is. Um, my birds provide a myriad of services for me outside of the meat and the eggs that they provide. First things first, uh, we have um, breed conservation efforts in place. So we have cotton patch geese, which are critically endangered, large dewlap to loose, and we have the Sebastopols. And the reason we have all of those is because they're all endangered according to the Livestock Conservancy. So by breeding those, we're able to contribute to their numbers. The other thing that we use them for is general weeding and they are in our grazing circuit. Um, after our horses and our sheep will go through a pasture, um, the flock has a turn in rotation. While the ducks and the guineas blow apart the manure piles and help us to spread the manure while they look for insects and they help to break parasitic life cycles, uh, the geese actually go out and forage on any vegetation that's left over by the other, the other animals that they didn't want. And they're also good lawnmowers too, though uh, I don't think you could rely on them solely if that is your intention. We have a hobby vineyard here on the farm and we use our geese to go through and just kind of keep things neat and tidy between the vines. The other thing that geese are great for is picking up fallen fruit. So after the orchard trees are done um, for apples, pears and whatever, anything that's fallen and rotten or anything that's good that they want to have that's on the ground, they're more than welcome to. And so that's a huge contribution system because it prevents pests that infect the apple trees or the other fruit trees the following season. I think many folks are really interested in introducing geese to their farm for their guardianship capabilities. And I think it's very important to know what geese are capable of doing and what they can't do. What they can do is sound their alarm and they can even be a deterrent for hawks, snakes, and other small predators that might threaten your flock. They are not physically capable of defending themselves or, <clears throat> excuse me, their flock mates against um, larger game like fox, coyote, bobcat, mountain lion, what have you. We have all of those predators here in central New Jersey, believe it or not, and so that's why we have livestock guardian dogs. The thing that's great about the geese is sometimes in our stream and in our waterways, the ducks will go down too far and the geese are going with them. So I know that they have a small layer of protection, and since hawks are a major threat in our area, I know that they're safe from that. But if there's any abnormal disturbance, not only do I have multiple alarm systems between the geese and the guinea fowl and the livestock guardian dogs, but I know that if, that if there is something going on, I will hear them, they will alert me to it, and I can run to assist if needed. Introducing guardian geese to the farm is pretty straightforward. You can order goslings, you can purchase them from a local hatchery or farm, and just raise them alongside your poultry. You wanna put them right next to their coop or wherever your other poultry are housed. Give them sounds, or excuse me, give them access to sight, sound, smells. So poultry wire separating the two groups is great. And they will be raised right alongside and come to know them and recognize them as part of their own flock. Um, you wouldn't wanna turn them out altogether until the geese are physically sizable enough that they could defend themselves during the pecking order fights that are sure to ensue if needed. Now I have successfully also integrated adult geese that maybe needed to be rescued or were donated to our farm. And we quarantine them for medicinal reasons. We just wanna make sure that they're healthy, but also this is an acclimation period. Again, getting used to sights, sounds, and smells for all birds. And then they're all turned out together during the day for supervised grazing. And once I know that everything's going, going okay, running smoothly, there's no extreme pecking order battles, then they can go together at night in the coop. Geese are a wonderful addition to the homestead and many permaculture farms consider them to be like the iconic permaculture animal because there are so many uses. They certainly do provide us with not just all of the things I mentioned already, but entertainment and companionship. And they do get along with our cats, dogs, all of our other poultry, and even are found grazing around the sheep and the horses whenever they feel like they want to go that way. So that is it for my contribution today. I hope you've learned something new. Send me any questions and you can check out which breed of goose is right for my farm chart for free at axenroothomestead.com under the resources download section. Take care.